again, somewhat random order, so unrelated to I'm that. I'm loving this, by the way. Um, Coming yeah. up with a list of questions is phenomenal. Uh, we got a lot of people that take the simple view of like, oh, that tailor-made six iron is five degrees stronger lofted than this one, and yet, you know, it'll launch the ball high because the CG is, is low, you know, in the, in the head. So, um, obviously you can't give numbers or percentages or whatever, but uh, how important is, you know, that relationship of loft and CG location, obviously it affects spin and all that stuff too, but um, if you had to put percentages on it, you know, what percent contributes to, you know, the actual launch of, say, a six iron or something, um, how do those interrelate and, and play together versus what's possible, you know, because the CG can only move so much. Sure. I mean, so you can kind of speak in terms of, like, levers, like, what's the biggest lever on loft and or launch and kind of work your way down. Um, actually, I don't know. I mean, our designers spent a whole lot of time trying to dial in CG and loft and, and to kind of hit the launch conditions. Maybe I'll let Corey kind of lead on yeah, this and I'll follow a, up. That's a really good question. It's a tough one to answer because there's a lot of different... Obviously a lot going into it. Yeah. So, like, to me, kind of the big levers on how the ball is going to launch from an iron are what's the loft on the club, what's the friction between the ball and the face, what's the length of the club, Where's the CG? How's the face bending? Like there are all these complex things that you got to take into account if you want to just figure out, you know, what contributes to the launch angle. And I think what our goal is to do is to quantify if you tweak these variables, what, a, how big is their lever on launch angle? And so like loft, for example, if you change one degree of loft around a seven iron, you're going to affect launch angle seven tenths of a degree. If you change your CG and you move it 0.1 inches, which is astronomical, like we're looking at a tenth of that on every iron generation, you're going to change launch angle like half a degree. You know, so it's like you kind of balance those. And another example would be you add half an inch of length, and that's like I think it's a half degree of launch angle or three tenths of a launch angle, or degree of launch angle, something like that. And so that's kind of what our knowledge-based library is for. We have documents that outline all of that, and we use those when we design golf clubs so we can pair loft and CG location, club length, face bending, all this kind of stuff, and make sure that we're going to produce a golf club that does what we want it to do. Um, does that answer the question? Yeah, as well as you probably okay. could, yeah. I think. I can't really put percentages on it, right. but I know yeah. we, we definitely have like curves that outline what the biggest levers are. And I, I think from just, if I had to, off the top of my head, loft is definitely probably the biggest lever on launch angle. And the easiest one to tweak, right? right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and the easiest one to change. Um, and then I think after that, it would be length, if I had to, like okay. the length of the golf yeah. club. Um, and of course, this is talking in the range in which we kind of deal with, right? Yeah. I mean, CG, since it's very difficult to move, the, you know, if right. you move the CG, a huge amount, and yes, it's going to have a huge amount, but since it's a difficult thing to move the CG, you know, a significant amount, it ends up just naturally being a smaller lower. Right. It doesn't mean we don't focus on it, we focus right. a lot on it, um, but uh, but you also got to take into account how all those things also affect ball speed. Uh, they're going to affect spin rate. You know, sometimes there's inverse relationships where, you know, on a, on a club with a lot of loft, higher friction does one thing, on a club with less loft, higher friction does something completely different mm -hmm. to launch angle and spin rate. Um, and so that's where kind of the fundamental research, we do a lot of stuff where we just have an iron and we stick different faces in it with different face roughnesses and we use ping man to understand how different surface finishes and things are going to affect spin rate. And as we change the loft, what's that going to do? You might be surprised. I mean, on a, you can see on a low lofted club or higher friction might end up lowering your spin rate. Yeah. So, this one's asking about putters, but I'm gonna uh, kind of change around. Where, how much? Was it your question? It's, no, <laughs> uh, it's asking about you haven't made a putter that actually pings in a while. Um, but whatever, acoustics are an important part of a player's perception, you know, feel and stuff. Uh, how do you guys test and you know how much of that can you even like kind of spec out like before and almost yeah. simulate? To know what it's going to sound like before? Um, sounds tough. Like, because um, a lot of it, so we've done, I'll just explain to you kind of some of the different tests that we run. 
Um, one is just having people hit it and give some qualitative feedback. And there's a lot of uh, methods to taking qualitative feedback, so what somebody tells you they perceive, and deducing kind of conclusions from it, right? Um, and then we have, I don't know, what's his name, Fred? He's like a binaural head, basically, and you know, he has kind of the inner workings of the ear and microphones, and we'll have people hit drivers in front of Fred and look at the actual pressure distribution of the sound waves, how they damp out, um, you know, their magnitude um, and, uh, and their frequency. And we can take that and then take what they say is a pleasurable sound or a not pleasurable sound mm -hmm. and try and dial that in. Now the question is, well, all right, one head sounds this way, so you take a, how do I put this? We have a competitor club that is yeah. just notoriously bad sounding that we use as kind of a baseline. Sure. <laughs> like, we don't want to go here. Um, and, uh, you know, and we have just kind of, you guys have all hit a number of drivers. There's a wide range out there, right? Mm -hmm. Depending on materials and things. And so we kind of use that range as a baseline and construction and say, all right, this one wasn't pleasurable. That's what that sound wave looked like. Um, and that gives us now a knowledge base of what sounds good, what doesn't sound good to the player. But we've also been developing, and this is a point of active research, is ways to simulate that. So can we take a CAD model? go into the computer, simulate it, like impact, and then actually play back an audio file that we can listen to. And so right now we've been, we're in, we have a working model where we can actually, we see OR plates, we, and then we compared it to what we see in the actual air can, where we can simulate the COR plate, um, and then <coughs> actually hear it on the computer, like a virtually, like, generated sound. And it sounds, like, identical to what we get out of the, out of the air cannon. And so that's kind of in its early stages, um, but one of our other PhDs is kind of working on developing that further so it can be kind of a streamlined piece like our aerodynamics or our FDA. Um, and so that obviously is a whole other step that will streamline our process. Um, ways to tweak sound is just, I mean, it's geometry. Um, all sound is is the way these, these uh, this vibrates, right? Um, there's these kind of resonant frequencies in the crown, which is probably the biggest driver behind what you hear is the crown. It's just experiencing uh, the most kind of uh, vibration and in the range that your ear really perceives. And it's facing um, your right. heads. It's, it's kind of up. Um, and so, but you can look at, you know, kind of rib structures and things like that to kind of influence mm -hmm. the way that that club is, the harmonics, right, yeah. uh, of the club. Um, and so... You know, we do qualitative testing, we do empirical testing with Fred, and we do virtual testing using, you know, 